I love this question so much, F6. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you ask questions. You know, typically we've seen time and time again, we've seen that Richter ban, we've seen that Decker ban, or even just like both of them being one of the top picks as well. So we can certainly see indecisive coming out with this as well as mm -hmm. Omelette du Baguette. They could potentially have that target ban against um, Morose, who is more of a Grux player. He's an aggressive offlaner coming from Indecisive. He is also a lane bully when it comes to playing Zaris as well as Feng Mao. Yeah, we definitely see that Zara's being picked up a lot. Definitely Moreau's coming in with that bruiser type of vibe, trying to just be aggressive. But with that being said, we did see Mugi as well on top of that Narbash. That might be a possible target as well. Just kind of shorten the pool going over to that support role. As we get into the first round of Bend here, it's really going to tell us exactly what we're going to see because these two teams are really trying to decide based off the meta. Especially like mm -hmm. you talked about the Zaris, also with the kind of Richter, because he's also a dangerous threat as well. A lot of people kind of forget about him until he's picked up, but he's able to kind of flex inside those three different roles. Same thing with Quang as well, being able to flex in those roles. But we do see that Decker coming out, like you just said, as that first band on the side of Indecisive. Yes, Decker able to be played offensively as well as defensively, able to have that engage initiations during team fights, but at the same time able to disengage, use her containment fence mm -hmm. um, to protect the squishier, uh, her squishier allies. I do want to mention both Teacid as well as Romaware in both of the two games that we just watched from Group D. They both played um, Gadget. They're both gadget enjoyers. So we'll have to see what both of these mid laners um, will pick over in the mid as we see that Richter ban coming out from Omelette. Yeah, that is the danger we were talking about. So I don't want Indecisive to pick that up. I think that's a pretty good ban for Omelette. And these are two big picks. These are definitely into kind of shortening the pool of support role. So it's definitely going to be spicy to kind of see what we're able to get on the support side of things because we do know we have that phase and that Muriel still up maybe be able to potentially also get that Bellico which is huge maybe able to be flexed so we definitely have to see there with the Narbash up as well might be Mugi's favorite going in yeah this could be uh definitely a Narbash for for Mugi play coming out but indecisive locking in that rampage in the first pick rampage he we know with the recent patch notes he's had a little bit of a buff especially with his rumble and rampage time and time again i think he's back he's he's back as the king of the jungle yeah. and initially it was between him and chimera but just watching fang booth um rampage has been definitely been showing out and showing up indeed he has king of the jungle has returned that was definitely a very successful win rate. As he's just being able to be able to dive that bag line, being the tank that you need. And as we do see the Quang, though, being picked up for Omelette. And this is also another kind of aggressive a player. That tether coming in clutch. Also the flexibility on the Quang. You could probably play him anywhere at this point. Probably not in the carry role. But definitely a little bit viable in most of these other roles can be argued in that way. But as we're going to be looking out to the second pick, what they go to, and there it is, that Lieutenant Bellica, one of the most aggressive kind of mid laners that supports you can kind of get out, especially with that Void Drone. At the same time, Lieutenant Belka can also be fl flex picked along with the Kwong. Um, Belka could be played over in the mid lane. She can be played over in the support lane. So yeah. we'll have to see where she will go on the side of Omelette. We we know that she's got that Void Drone able to knock up with her Seismic Assault, provide that crowd control for the team in order to really lock down on their targets. I agree with you there, but they're going to definitely need somebody to kind of be that front line for them. So we're going to see what they pick up on that third pick. But for Indecisive, see the Howitzer coming into play. I've been seeing a little bit of, of the rap play going around that long range and that kind of like high single target damage, able to kind of just self peel for himself. And even with that Howie mind, just being aggressive or being defensive with it, just allows him to just be such a nuisance inside these team fights or just trying to go for a pick off in the mid lane. 
At the same time, ManQ actually is a big fan of the howitzer support. So this might be a howitzer support that we'll be seeing still with this, this pick in with Indecisive's pick here with howitzer. Could be in the mid lane, could be over onto the support role. Mm -hmm. um, definitely with that single target damage we're going to be expecting from howitzer he also has that disengage with the knockback or the little boop that he has along with the r2000 dealing lots of damage um curious to see how omelette will respond to this because we we see that there's a lot of damage coming out but like you mentioned who's going to be that front line coming out from omelette to beget gonna have to wait and decide on that but we do see indecisive though with their third pick picking up that twin blast one of those nasty ADCs that is just left uncontrolled or even gets a slight amount of a lead. He's just able to kind of be a menace inside that lane and pairing it with a rampage, being able to dive that back line, create just kind of this kind of space, a little bit of separation to allow that twin blast to kind of just do his thing in the back line. It's just going to be absolutely amazing. But maybe with that howitzer, be able to get that boop if it is played in support or getting maybe even just a Narbash able to use that thunk, get a little bit of sustain with them. As we see the Drongo being picked up to counter this Twin Blast, trying to trade out, which is doing a little bit more damage, especially with that Rad Rounds and the Silence, being able to kind of shut down the Twin Blast, trying to run away. Drongo, definitely, if if you see the Twin Blast on the other side, Drongo's definitely one of the safer picks if you're going to play the ADC. But now we're seeing the Zarus. The Zarus, um, a band coming out from Omelette, they know that Morose excels as the Zarus. They've seen from the previous game that we just watched that with, when he's piloting that hero, he's able to really lock down from afar with that Colosseum on top of the combination with gadget so that's something that they're denying and really taking away from indecisive here so we'll have to see what kind of um we're kind of seeing the the comp or the play style that's coming out from indecisive um of course there's that front line the rampage to help protect the twin blast um but there's the narbash band that we were talking about they don't want mugiwawa on the narbash really denying him that sustain and the heal that that hero provides yeah, that crash bang boom, especially with that true silver, just kind of just kind of being a little bit unstoppable to kind of just do whatever he needs to. And that just a great zoning tool for him and Arbash to have. Like you said, that healing as well, especially when you go into that mid to late game, just kind of becomes a nuisance. And you just kind of have to deal with just that longevity of a fight that they can have with an Arbash there. But with the Zarus out of the way, they talk about the gadget not being the Wombo combo there. But still, that guy just is being able to have that Tesla Dome, able to be able to just create a little <clears throat> bit of appeal for herself, especially with the steel, being able to dive that back line. That gets pick up the big body that they need to kind of round this team comp out. I love the pick with the steel. Um, steel could definitely be also picked over in the jungle. Same with the Quang, mm -hmm. could also be played in the off lane. The heroes coming out from Omelette so far are very team comp reliant. Uh, they're really relying on that CC coming out from the steel, as well as the tethers from Quang to land, as well as the knock up from Lieutenant Bellica to help protect that Durango. Um, at the same time, he can also be played in the support role. Yeah, so definitely could flex his Bellico or this steel any other way. But we do see that Grux coming out, like we talked about for Rose, just to kind of just get being a little bit more aggressive inside that off lane. So that's going to be a problem if he's allowed to just kind of just do Grux things and by himself, or possibly just be able to just kind of dive the back line. You know, when Grux starts Gruxing, it's not a good day. It is not a good day indeed when Grux starts Gruxing, especially in the hands of Morose. As we see Indecisive rounding out their comp here, um, locking in the Gideon. Of course, Gideon, one of those staple mid laners. He's one of the aggressive ones as well. We talked about maybe Gadget being played here, um, but they are able to lock onto Gideon. And then we see Wraith coming out from Omelette. Yeah, this is kind of a little bit of a surprise here. Not a lot of Wraith, not a lot of success coming out of this hero. But we do know Wraith, once he's able to hit his combo, it's kind of like an insane burst. Able to match any mid laner's burst. Probably a little bit better, especially if it's on target. And with the amount of CC they have, they're going to be able to kind of land anything that they need to. Especially if a tether hits or a big shield slam comes out on top. Being able to get that double shot in. It's going to be significant in those team fights, especially if you can get towards a squishier target. 
Definitely going to struggle a little bit against the Gideon in the mid lane. Uh, Gideon is able to clear those waves a lot faster than the Wraith can. Wraith does need a little bit of time to scale as a hero, like you mentioned, depending on what kind of crest he's opting for. If he's opting for mm. the Ortis or if he wants to go more for the cleanse against the Howitzer or the Rampage or especially the Grux. We'll have to see how this plays out as both of these teams have their roster they're ready yeah, and as i'm looking at these teams it's going to be an absolute banger of a match as we're getting ready to jump on into this game as we have a french civil war going on between indecisive and i'm going to do baguette to my french is not that good so probably didn't sound too great there but these two team comps are looking very spicy and i think it's going to come down to whoever can get that early game start and i do think though for omelet they kind of have a little bit more of a well-rounded team going into this they definitely do. I love the, the, the heroes that they picked up against Indecisive here. But at the same time, the Morose, like we mentioned, if he's able to scale and get ahead as the Grux, if they don't stop him from Gruxing, he's, he's going to Grux, which is what we're going to be expecting him to do, especially since he's going to go up against Psylocke here, um, who will take some time to, to get to level 6. Yeah, but once you get to that level six, still just, I know we joke around this a lot. He kind of just becomes full build, able to do what he needs to do in the team fights or to get an initiation off, help the jungler get a kill either in, either in the off lane or if he rotates to like go to mid or to a river buff, be able to pick those fights, those 2v3s, 1v2s, able to get that CC off and be able to do the job. As we usually man Q on that outer over inside of the uh, duo lane, that's going to be a support Howie, and that's going to be a pretty interesting matchup as you do have to go against that Bellico, which kind of just messes him up. But with the Twin Blast there, being able to have that double shot, it's going to take out that Bellico drone pretty easily. They definitely do have to play around the cooldown of that knockback from Howitzer because Man-Q is one of those aggressive supports. Moogie more has been kind of exploring other roles, but has been playing a lot of Bellica. So curious to see how he will do, especially since he's going to be in the support role this time. Um, he's definitely going to be using that drone to help drain the mana that's coming out from that Howitzer as both of these... Uh, the heroes in the duo lane and both of these players all of these players in the duo lane are able to have that kill potential talking about that kill potential talking about this matchup looking over into the off lane do you have that steel versus the grux and we know we did kind of meme a little bit about grux just be gruxing in that lane but steel not necessarily having too much of a problem with most <clears throat> heroes what does that matchup kind of look like in your eyes so with Steel versus the Grux, Grux, of course, able to have that um, bleed with the passive. But once he, like we mentioned earlier with the level six, with Steel, once he's able to kind of um, roam and rotate into these team fights, that shield slam and the, that ultimate coming from Steel makes a huge impact during these team fights. Um, so we'll have to see how these junglers will also make an impact as they either rotate over onto the off lane or rotate over onto the duo lane as we see Kwong on the off lane. Taking a little peek, looking to see if there's any potential, but does not find it. Looks to turn his attention towards the river buff as the three minute mark hits. But Niza on side of the rampage does see and it's gonna have to push towards. Until they're not hitting there, it's gonna be unlikely able to get that right river buff on the side of an decisive Assad. Looking to try and get to that other river buff, but they're able to clean it up. Rock misses. Nothing too much to come of it, but inside the duo lane, Stardust has to be careful as Mankyu on the Howie and Kabana on the Twin Blast, able to put that pressure against Mugiwawa there. There's a lot of long range pressure coming from Cabo as well as Q. as we see Panda making that rotation over on the left side, just clearing out those wards. This is what we were talking about with kill potential because they're able to just really lo um, lock down on those heroes, especially with the R2000. If if they are just caught in the wrong place at the wrong time, uh, they'll able to secure that kill. They would be able to definitely secure that with that pressure they're coming in. And that's just that that just shows the power of that R2000. Do you see Nizar just throwing a rock, looking Ooh. to maybe hit? Does not take did the hit, but able to get a little bit of poke off on Morosian side of things. 
Still at that four minute mark. No kills yet. As we see Quang off on side of his blue side, looking to get himself up to level six. Rampage taking that reset, probably getting to his first item, getting to that first tier two. As now we see that CS difference, about a 16 lead on the side of Assad. Gonna have to have that pressure. But as we do look on over to the items, we do see that the Ruthless Broadsword is coming in on both Nizal on the Rampage and on top of Moreau's. Look like they're going to the Basculus, a double Basculus here. Trying to get that shred. It doesn't stack, but hold on a second. Hold your phone. Thank you. Getting a little bit pressured out, but the rock hits. Coming out nice. I'll be able to get that counter jungle. He gets that pressure going on top. Does not have it, but he's going to have to blink away. And Panda escapes just barely as the team's going to take a retreat. And that's a great counter game coming in from Nizal there on the rampage. Niza with the response uh, along with uh, taking out that blink from Panda there. We know that Kwong no longer has this blink as we hit this five minute mark. We have these neutral objectives that are spawning. We have that first fang tooth that is up. Meanwhile, on the right hand side, we have um, that mini prime coming up soon. Both of these teams have to be careful. Mugi a little bit pushed up here. As Nizal peeks his head back out, the high mountain there is to separate, and the rock lands. He's going to go straight onto Stardust. He's going to be eliminated, but the rotation coming in from Roma, where is going to put down a subtle or smite that is going to put down that Howie. But Nizal is there and couple <gasps> one HP to dream and falls to Roma as that huge gank comes on in, and that's a double kill for him as he's looking to get that early start that we were talking about. This is what we have to also worry about. If we let this Wraith scale, he's able to, he, he's also an 80 carry. So that's a lot of damage output as we reach this late game. Romaware 2 and 0 oh right now, putting in those stacks into his soul chalice. Meanwhile, over on the right hand side, both of these offlaners reaching that level six, burning the blink on Silox this time. So that's the blink on Panda as well as Silox as we look towards these neutral objectives. One mistake, and that's all it takes. 30 seconds to go. Mini problem will be up. So now it's going to be talking about. Who's going to get what objective? And it's going to, are they going to be looking to get a trade out? We do you see dual lane kind of pushing up mid lane lane, trying to cover for the rate to get back. Going to go back into their dual side map to try and get this laning back into this phase. But with both their blinks down, it's going to be a little bit of a rough time, especially for Mugi with that Bellico. We kind of not really any escape, not a lot of mobility to get out of there if need be. As we do see Niza taking a little peek at mid lane here. Both junglers are here. Nice little 2v2. The tether hits. The pop-up knocks. The rewind is there, oh. so there's not a lot where he can go, but the blink comes out. Nizos here to try and save the day as Wraith is looking low, but cannot get the end. Oh. There it is. They're able to clean it up. Getting a little bit too aggressive. The tether lands on top of Nizos, but he's going to be able to try and get him one leap, one rock, and he hits, and down he goes, and that's a double kill coming out on the side of Indecisive as they look to push this lead. That was all Panda needed, or excuse me, Niza needed in order to hit, hit that level six, securing that kill onto Roma where he was able to um, hit or, or put out the behemoth and then secure that kill on the other jungler. Unfortunately, we know that Panda didn't have his blink that time and now he still hasn't reached level six. Um, so that's a, a lot of kills going towards indecisive at the moment. We are two and four, still pretty even. We don't know how this game will go yet, but definitely both junglers making that impact where they can um, all over the map. Indeed they are. Real question though, we do see the double brimstone. Looks like the Quang is going a little bit more on the tankier side of Stardust and the Howie Boop able to hit, oh. forces the blink out on top of Stardust. And we're seeing that combo coming out, but Romaware lurking around does not have the rewind available, but the Maker Ring comes out. Romaware turns his attention on a Kabadana, but Niza is here. Romaware is not going to be able to kill anything, but Man Q is, and Stardust is out. Big Rock coming in, Man Q, no mana. Looks like he's going to be dead to right as they pick up Ooh. a one for one puzzle here on the counter gank to try and help out his team. But is this where you want to be? As you just lost a crucial member in Panda, oh. that is two down as a two for one trade. And right now, Indecisive is making a statement. 
Romo Ware with those rotations coming in clutch to help his teammates over on the duo lane. Unfortunately for Mankiw, we know he's an aggressive support, an aggressive player, but that aggression just costed him his life. Yes, he got a kill onto the ADC, but that's necessarily not where you want the kills to go towards. You want that gold to go towards your ADC, who you want to scale into the late game. Omelette, they are piloting two ADC sees um, over in their roster they have the drongo as well as the wraith who is becoming much of a monster right now um, as he makes these rotations and indecisive just forcing to react as we see niza um, rotating over onto dual lane or as well as at acid rotating over right after they already um, secured the kill against them forced to react but they end up coming out with a win especially with his aggressive howard sir Mankyu making plays when need to be made as we do see the first faint tooth being pressured out Saad has to take the blink here and has to run away as romaware and moogie are trying to get the kill on top and romaware cleans it up and that's a kill but the faint tooth is still up as the dual lane is not going to be there and that's the first one that goes towards indecisive now can omelette kind of rewind themselves and get themselves in a position to maybe get a kill does not look like it Trying to make a difference here. It's still a close quarter game. It definitely is. Unfortunately for um, Omelette, that first Fang Tooth does go the way of Indecisive. Not a lot of vision towards that side of the map, except for um, just around it. So unfortunately for them, they were able to secure that first Fang Tooth there. But Mankyu, just like what we mentioned, we he played so aggressive um, earlier in the previous matches. He's also going for more damage. Um, we saw him play, playing Belka with the time warp, but here's the pick here. And he goes up and blinks after him, and there it is. And not the blink, gonna have to use that shrapnel blast, but Capadonna's not done yet. He's ready there for the kill, and there it is. And that's a easy double going to the side of Indecisive, and that's that pressure we're looking for, and that's the pressure that we've been seeing this entire game. Unfortunately, here in the mid lane, we talked about Romaware piloting that Wraith, not able to have that wave clear. He's been rotating so much over onto dual lane. He did lose his tier one tower, but he's making the rotation again. And the shield slam comes off on top, and here's a surprise, surprise coming out, and that's a triple gank. Goodbye, Morose. And this might be a mini prime going over towards the side of Omelette to try and get themselves back into this game. Omelette du baguette, taking those advantages where they can, making those rotations. Um, we saw that there were those members of Indecisive making the rotation over onto the left-hand side and also for them to securing that fang tooth. But Romaware really just rotating everywhere on the uh, on in the game here. So making that rotation over on the off lane, taking out Morose. Um, and now they've got the mini prime. Now we'll have to see who has it. So it really depends on whether it's, a, uh, it's in the off laner's hands or over on the jungler's hands. And as we speak, we have it on Silox, the steel off laner. We'll have to see what he does with it. They can do a lot here with it. I'm also going to give him a little bit more pressure inside of that off lane. Able to get the kill on Morose. Kind of just put him a little bit back behind. Maybe get close that gap a little bit. But with that back, it's going to have to force the steel to kind of get back in the lane, trying to soak up that XP. As we do see Morose, though, looking to possibly rotate for this river buff. Mookie getting back into the lane, but Romware looking like he wants to roam over towards this <laughs> duo lane. Just going to take himself to go back, going to look back for this river buff. But yes, he's been rotating a lot. I think he's right now, he's been the player that's been making the most impact inside all of these lanes and just still keeping the pressure in mid. Even though he did lose his T1, he's just creating so much pressure. But Niza on this gank, the tether hits and the black hole comes out on top and forces the blink out on Panda. And that's five minutes more that it's down. So you're going to have to be careful even in that jungle there because that is a quick gank that just kind of popped up out of nowhere. Panda yet again losing his blink being forced to 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 burn it as we see stardust also getting his blink forced out by cabo here there's a lot of pressure coming everywhere but romaware is just gonna be one hp in a dream gonna get positive on that ward can't connect but the reinforcements try to arrive with panda but he doesn't have his blink Assad is out of mana but nice is not and he uses Ooh. his <gasps> ultimate to get the heavenly flash back to where he needs to go and he's oh. running but the meteorite 
finally takes him down. Nice job, though. Just playing that pressure. Almost got away with that Quang. A little slick move. That was so slick. I really love that. Able to use his ultimate to go back to where his sword was. We have yet to see that on broadcast. And of course, Puzzle Panda not having his uh, blink up. It was really hard for him to disengage. But there was that rotation coming in from the duo lane to kind of help secure that kill. Um, definitely on that jungler. Rampage really showing up. 3-0 and 5. Niza against Puzzled Panda, who is 1-3. Just doing his best, getting that um, Fire Blossom to help him uh, clear the waves in the jungle. But looks like he's going to take the World Breaker as his next item. We are now nearing the 15-minute mark. We have the second Fang Tooth that's spawning here. Both teams are looking at it. Gideon putting on a, a ward over on that side as we see both teams just rotating on over. We did talk about a little bit of that mini or prime buff. We're not seeing a lot of benefit coming from it. Other than just getting the gold for you, the team, there's nothing much that the steel has been able to do with it. Unable to kind of match that clear with the Grux because once he kind of just uses his two abilities on top of the wave, he kind of just disappears and that pressure is gone. As he does take the rotate over, Grux is looking to help with the second bank to all teams are converging over to this neutral objective. One team looking to finally get one on the board, get a little bit more time on their buffs. Niza finally starts it. The other team looking to get that extra movement speed. Who can win in this battle in this duel? Panda with the team of Indecisive taking control of this pit. Now with this deal here, they're able to secure it on the side of Indecisive though. And now the battle is breaking out. Cabadana by himself, but Moroz is here. Able to use that Warlord's Cry to stop anything from happening. But Niza on the back line on the other side of the map, able to pick up Mugi. And that's one down, a faint tooth and a kill. As they're looking to get a little bit more aggressive, this rock does hit. And they're able to follow up with a lot of damage. But can they clean this kill up? And there it is one more time. And they pick up three as Pandas also turn tail and running. But Roma... Oh. The man, the myth, the legend, trying to keep this game alive, able to pick up one, and that is one for three, going towards the side of Indecisive. One for three on the side of Indecisive, as well as the second Fang Tooth. We see here Indecisive just creating that pressure over on the duo side here as they've secured that second Fang Tooth of the game. We can't underestimate Romaware, uh, still able to take out these heroes in, uh, uh, in Indecisive here. He's becoming a little bit of a monster himself as now he's got his second item or his first item rather, um, the Vanquisher. Um, Four and one currently. We mentioned Silox though, not able to do very much as the steel, even though he was given that mini or prime buff. He has not even touched a, a single chip of that tier one tower of Morose's there. Like it, there's just all the T1s from all of um indecisive here it's it's still up so there's they're really lacking the wave clear that uh, indecisive has against them yeah i think it has more a little bit to do with just kind of communicating a little bit better with each other as we do see them split up a lot especially you just look to that last team fight we do see indecisive roaming towards this mini prime side Omelette trying to get something off. Mugiwa goes for a seismic assault, able to hit, but no follow up damage, able to get there. But on the off lane side of things, the rotation is coming along. Steel uses that shield slam, and there's a fight over by the pit. Kira needs to be careful, and the black hole comes out on top. Puzzle in a bad position. Mugi low on health. They're able to pick up the Drongo, but are they going to be able to pick up anything else? And into the wall it goes. Selox goes down, and Puzzle Panda on the run, trying to get himself out. And as we look to Wars, maybe can this rock hit oh. the blink comes out but it's not able <laughs> to save his life and that's four members down from where fighting for his life and they're looking to charge not able to clean up for the five man but do get four in return four members down on the side of omelette du baguette unfortunately for them they were just able to be picked out the thing is silox used his shield slam to get away and once he did make that rotation over onto the jungle where there was a skirmish happening he did not have it and of course romaware just not being where they wanted him to be um which is where a lot of their damage comes from as well so it is lucky for him he was able to get out 
and weave and bob and of course avoid getting hit by those abilities coming from indecisive whether that be the boulder toss or um, being cc'd or uh, by the howitzer as well as the grux but this we're 19 minutes in they've secured the last mini or prime once that 20 minutes hits we'll have that big or prime up on the map and that's going to be a huge play to be made it could also be said if the side of ama is able to steal that that might change the pace of the game for them as they will now have that pressure but thank you and the rest of indecisive are lurking over on this off lane I do see TB in the uh, duo lane by himself with Niza oh. a little bit close by. Howie Boot goes off. Psylocke's looking to initiate. Moogie needs to be careful here as Moreau's going to pick him up with that bleed damage and get that going. But Roma where on the opposite side trying to find up a kill here. Panda trying to look to retrieve, but Roma needs to do that as well. And they're able to pick up a kill. And that's three members down. They're able to pick up a double on the opposite side as Panda gets oh, the tether off. But no. gets hit in the face <laughs> with a huge boulder. And right now indecisive. It's making the right decision as they keep this pressure going on. Psylocke's on the run using that shield bow rush to just kind of get out of there and trying to stay alive for his team. But man, this is just outstanding coming out of Indecisive. Outstanding coming out of Indecisive, as well as Moreau's just really capitalizing on that mini prime buff that he received. They are ahead in kills, ahead in gold. All of this pressure coming out from each and every lane. We are 20 and 6 with Indecisive coming out on top as we have a little bit of a replay freeze here, unfortunately. Thanks for your patience, everybody. But Cabo Dani, now that we have this a little bit of a freeze frame, 9, 1, and 4. He is also going to become a monster himself. He is picking up the Witch Stalker, um, though, versus Romoware picking up that Ortis. Um, so he does have that cleanse versus um, the Tether, whether that be the CC coming out from the Steel. So we'll have to see how this plays out as we are back in somewhat. We are in the game a little bit of free swing, <laughs> but Cabo's able to pick up the kill on top of Moogie and he goes down. But the third thank you goes over towards Indecisive as the replay mode is trying to figure out where the walls are. And that is it. And right now, Indecisive, with that third thank you, correct me if I'm wrong here, Ari Dog, but that is a huge permanent buff going towards the side of Indecisive, which already has a lead. Yes. And sorry, I just keep thinking about that freeze frame was like, the narrator goes, freeze. You're probably wondering what I'm doing here. <laughs> 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 From by Puzzle Panda. But yes, they now have all the neutral objectives in the match, but they're coming on Moroz. And they're literally full force ahead, pedal to the metal. And they're going to go after it, but the Howie Boob comes in to save the day. They're not going to be able to take him down there. But now the counter gank is possibly here to stay. And if a rock lands, might Ooh. be detrimental. On the retreat, Torn Space goes in, and what a rock! And that is two members low. Roma gets going to have to get out. The knockup is there, and they're not going to be able to clean it. Oh, oh, never mind. Assad coming in, being able to click and pick, and Sightlock's trying to do his best to peel. Now with another blink down as Mugiwawa, now in a bad position, needs to get out of there. No escape. He doesn't have the blink up. It's going to go down once again. And that's another pick up. Kabadana looking off into the inhibitor in his dual side. Panda can't really challenge him as the inhibitor goes down and they're going to turn their attention towards his or prime. Man, oh man. Two members down. Bye bye, Mugi. Bye bye, Romaware. This is this this might be the indecisive might be the better of the French team right now as they look at this orb prime they want to close out this game they've taken out the left inhibitor they're going they're once they get this orb prime buff they're 23 and 6 we are 23 minutes in all of these members of this team are beefed up at the moment they have a lot of gold in their pocket and unfortunately we do have this replay bug but thanks for your uh, patience everybody as we you know figure out that there is that secure on the orb prime they get in indeed with that third fang teeth as well just being a huge buff getting that extra power extra protections the ability just to be stronger than your opponent without having to even buy items now you have that orb prime 
Okay, can't get the primordial fang to just quite yet. Still on a nice timer. But with that right in him to already down, they're looking towards this mid inhib and the left. But over on side of that off lane, a big four man conversion <laughs> over towards Morose, but he's still alive, <laughs> picking and just screaming away. Going after actually gonna fight Moogie, forces the blink out and just 4v1. He is groxing, ladies and gentlemen, and he picks up a kill and he's oh my God. One. he cannot be stopped. Get him some help, jeez. And the rest of Indecisive is just <laughs> pushing this core as Morose is 1v4ing and Panda trying to peel. Silox goes down on top of that and that's four members, Panda. And that is gonna be game, oh. ladies and gentlemen. And Morose, just an absolute animal, man. <laughs>